Hey guys, welcome back to my art channel. If you're new, hi, I'm May, and I make digital fluid art and digital pour art with cells. And today we're gonna to be looking at how to make transparent bubble cells on Ibis Paint. If you haven't heard of Ibis Paint, it's a pretty fun art program and it's free and it works on iOS and Android devices. So go check it out if you haven't already. And if you have, let's get started. We're gonna open up our canvas and I like to start with four by 2.8 inches by 600 DPI which should be about 2400 by 1680. Once you have your canvas, we're gonna shrink it down so we can see all the edges. And I think today we're gonna to start off with a rainbow. I wanna do a very vibrant rainbow. So you can really see those transparent bubbles. So we'll stick to the original color palette here. And I think we'll start with a blurring brush one. It'll be a good brush to start with. And I like to do a second layer. I think we'll stick with a white background. And as you can see, this brush does have a size limitation, but that's very easy to fix. All you do is when you open, oh, sorry, that's my water bottle. Make sure to stay hydrated. But to edit the brush size limitations, all you do is when you open up your brushes, you wanna hit the tools icon over here to the right, the settings, and just make sure your max thickness is all the way up and then as you can see, we will not have any more size limitations on our brush, which makes it a lot easier covering the entire canvas. So I'm gonna pick this red here. And just start with layering it down in a wave pattern. And then orange. Like so. Yellow. Green. Now there's quite a few different greens here. I'm gonna stick with the kind of the yellowy green. It's starting to look like the lifesaver colors. <laughs> and then we'll do blue or light blue. And then indigo. we lost some of that red at the bottom. Instead of making them all a bit bigger, we'll just put another bit of red at the top to kind of blend it all in together, like so. And before we can make our transparent bubble cells, we're gonna create our liquid image first, which I do have a more in-depth tutorial on just how to make a digital fluid pour on Procreator, on Ibis Paint, in my playlist here, if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, we'll just start with the usual steps. and transform, pull off those white edges, like so, back into filter, and play with that radius, pull that distortion, the amount of ripples, and its phase. ratio down a bit. Now, I might start off over to the side this time. Like so. Like so, you can layer them as much as you want or as little as you want. Completely up to you and what you want to accomplish with your image. Now let's put that. That looks pretty cool. 
I like playing with the polar coordinates and kind of giving it that swiped look. But what I wonder is if I put another, and also just seeing how many times you layer it over, what it will start to look like. Or if you go back one or two steps, see what, that's very straight, <laughs> what it will look like. Up the distortion. Do that. That's pretty trippy. And then once I have a pattern that I like, I will further it, manipulate it with the liquify pen in our drag feature. Just to get more like it's kind of bleeding off the canvas and kind of less of that uniform look that the filters kind of give it. Like so. Very vibrant. Playing with vibrant colors. I always loved to do that as a kid, finger painting and mashing them all together, thinking it would turn into something pretty cool. And often they were just watercolor based paint. And I don't know if you guys ever did that when you were a kid and it just turned into a giant <laughs> muddy mess. And all your beautiful colors just turned into brown. And then kind of when you have a shape that you like. And I find I want it to have more kind of ripples throughout it. So then I can go back into our wave. Just kind of give it a little bit more of that wavy kind of look. Like so. And then to get rid of those edges, I'm just going to transform and pull them off. As much as I like the harsh lines, I think I might want a little bit more blurred. So I'm going to drag it off to the left here and play with our blur tools. It's a moving blur. You can do a lens blur. It's pretty trippy. <laughs> I think I'll just do a Gaussian blur. Just blur it a little bit, so that way our bubbles get a very interesting look. And there's two ways we're going to do our transparent bubbles. We're going to do it oops, directly on the image itself, and we'll do ones on a second layer as well. So we kind of have our translucent bubble cells, and then we have our transparent bubble cells as well, are kind of two different techniques. I find the brush I like to use to create this effect. I kind of have to scroll way to the bottom here. Excuse me. Is Clouds Real? I tend to use a lot. It works quite well. And again, it has a limitation on the size, so make sure to bring that all the way up. Like so. And I find with what I like to do with the bubbles is you can kind of pick colors. But most of the time bubbles to start out with just to get the idea of how it works is I usually like to start with white. Because then you can kind of get those. You just lay little patches down with the white. And we're working on a second layer right now, or third layer. And we'll turn these into our transparent bubbles. The nice thing with these ones, we'll do it in two sections, is once you place them down, you can kind of move them anywhere on the canvas too, which is kind of cool. Once you've placed a few, we're going to then go into our special pen and click our expand option and make those expand bubbles. This time we're going to do it over the paint. And because we used the brush, Cloud's real. 
and it has it doesn't have an opaque stamp when you expand it outwards that white gets pushed out and you can still see the color of your digital pour underneath giving it that transparent bubble feel and then you can go really crazy with it and you can add different colors if you don't want to just do white you can do darker colors and so it just creates such a different texture for yourself And I say with all these different cell techniques, you can kind of combine them too and have a very different looking digital fluid pour, which is pretty cool. Like so. And that's how you get your transparent bubbles. Like I said, you can do some, if we go back into our brush here and pick a different color, you can do dark bubbles. You could lay down some patches of black and then open up your special pen and have some darker bubbles as well. The nice thing is this, the color palette's limitless, so if you don't want the traditional kind of white look or the darker bubble look with black, you can do purple, you can match it to your color palette and do different kind of rainbow bubbles everywhere, which is kind of cool, like so. And if you want little flyaways, all you do is just bring your stamp and just do one or two little stamps here and there. And go back into your special pen and just blow out those little areas and you can kind of get those individual little bubbles that are kind of floating away. Like so. And if you don't necessarily want them uniform, you can just take the drag feature. And kind of push them into more kind of weird oblong type shapes those little jelly bean kind of look. Or if you want the perfect bubbles, you can keep your burbles the way they are as well. And the nice thing with these ones, because we did on a third layer, you can take sections with your lasso and you can highlight a section like this and use your transform. And you can kind of move them different areas. So let's say you had it over here and you couldn't really see it and you wanted to put it somewhere where you can really see those bubbles. You can drag it over here to your purple and hit OK and then remove selected or selection area and you can move them around the canvas too, which is pretty cool. And we'll move some of these guys out of the way so we can play with our translucent bubble cells, which is essentially the exact same technique but doing it directly on the canvas which kind of gives it a different kind of feel as well. Turn this guy kind of sideways and shrink it down. Like so. And remove that selection area so we can keep playing. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go down to our second layer where our actual pore image is. And we'll do sticking with the clouds reel. And this time we'll do some colored bubbles because then we can, the cool thing is you can kind of make rainbow bubbles or whatever color palette you like bubbles too. So I took the dark blue, which kind of looks black on that side. Actually, let's do, do the teal. So will show up a little bit there. Mix in a bit of the red. And then we can mix in a bit of the pink. And then we can mix in a bit of white bring out the color, and then put that green, like so. So then when you go to expand it under the special pen, keep in mind because we're doing it on the original, it's going to expand your image as well, but also will kind of give those pulled edges. And you don't want to expand it too much because you don't want to lose that texture that we're getting. But now, you can kind of get those rainbow bubbles. You can pull in the color, like so, and then you can drag them, and make some oblong shapes, like so, and then you can even, from there, oops, go into brushes, and you can 
go all the way back and grab and get some dip pen soft. And you can grab your white and drop that down a little bit. You can kind of go on a fourth layer and go back in. Turn that opacity back up a bit. And our thickness of our brush. Mm -hmm. Kind of go back in and, oops. Turn that right out. And go back in and kind of give those bubbles some of that, those highlights. And then you can, don't want them too harsh, you can go into your blur brush and blur them a little bit. I put that off too much. So. And so the ideas are limitless with this, which is pretty cool. And yeah, and that's how you make transparent and translucent bubble cells on Ibis paint. And like I said, it's such a trippy look, especially when you're doing very vibrant and wild colors. And yeah, if you guys recreate any of the art, like I said, follow me on Instagram and tag me. And I'd love to see your creations and I can highlight them in my stories and kind of get the digital fluid art community kind of growing and trying out all these cool different cell techniques. And check out my other tutorials that I have online on how to create. I think the other one I did was revert cells and expansion cells as well, as well, or two other techniques, and I'll be doing a bunch of other techniques as well. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!